Hi, and welcome back to the Apes Flipped Classroom. Today we are talking about sewage treatment. And so that's the treatment of all wastewater. So we're gonna talk about best practices of sewage treatment and all of the different steps of sewage treatment. So we'll begin with primary treatment. So primary treatment is a physical process. It is the removal of large debris. So that's um, toilet paper, leaves, plastic, sediment, paper towels, anything big with a screen or a grate. Um, so this is a physical way of separating and there's lots of different styles here, but it's a physical process. Um, that material is then taken off and processed separately. Secondary treatment, so our second step, is the biological breakdown of organic matter, usually feces, by bacteria. This is an aerobic process. That means it requires oxygen. It's going to produce carbon dioxide. And so um, that process is going to involve aeration of the water. So whether that's a um, fountain or some sort of other form of pump or circulation, it's going to be using oxygen. Third step is tertiary treatment. So now this is chemical treatment that reduces pollutant levels. So this can be things like nitrate, phosphate, ammonia. It can also include some of those trace materials, so pharmaceuticals or any of the endocrine disruptors. And then the fourth step is the disinfectant step. And then this step, depending on the treatment facility, it might be something as simple as chlorine, or it could be a more um, sophisticated method like the use of UV light or ozone to kill bacteria and other pathogens such as E. coli. Once that process has been gone through, what remains is considered effluent. So this is the liquid waste that gets discharged into a surface body of water from a wastewater treatment plant. So let's talk about primary treatment in detail. So I'm gonna slide this down over here. Okay, so our raw sewage comes in and it's gonna go through screens or bar grates a lot of the time. And it is going to go through something that kind of breaks up anything that remains and that'll drop it down into a tank that is called a grit chamber. So that grit chamber is going to allow any of the heavier solids to settle out. And those are filtered out through the bottom for grit disposal. And all of the floating material, whoops, sorry, um, goes here to a primary clarifier. And this is where we have, um, again, more of our heavy materials sinking down to the bottom and those are being pulled off for sludge treatment and disposal. The liquid that comes off of this primary clarifier is relatively clear, that's the term clarifier. Um, and that flows up through pipes, and this is considered primary effluent, flows up through pipes and into an aeration tank for secondary treatment. So this aeration tank, we're going to have an air compressor, a fountain, some form of in incorporating oxygen into this aeration tank. There's also something in the aeration tank called activated sludge. So that activated sludge is the um, solids that contain bacteria. And so those bacteria break down our organic matter into carbon dioxide and nutrients like nitrogen and phosphorus. Um, Secondary treatment removes up to 70% of phosphorus and 50% of nitrogen, but it does not remove those persistent organic pollutants like medications or pesticides. After it goes through the aeration tank, our material is gonna go into a secondary clarifier. And again, any of our solid material is gonna get pulled down. Um, if that is activated sludge, so sludge containing those bacteria, it gets pumped back into the tank to keep those bacteria doing their job. So this sludge is the inorganic solid waste that collects at the bottom of the tanks in primary and secondary treatment. We spin the water off of it to concentrate it further and that dry remaining physical waste is collected. Depending on the wastewater treatment system, it might be put in a landfill, it might be burned, um, 
possibly generating electricity, or it might be turned into fertilizer pellets. Um, after our primary and secondary treatment, some plants go directly to disinfectant and discharge into surface water, while some will use tertiary treatment to remove more nutrients before discharge. Okay, so um, as I said, some use tertiary treatment to remove more nutrients, some go directly to disinfectant. And that disinfectant depends greatly on the particular system. So tertiary treatment, if there is tertiary treatment in the wastewater treatment, then it uses chemical filters to remove more of the nitrates and the phosphates from that secondary effluent. So this is a critical step because we know that effluent that contains elevated nitrate and phosphate levels leads to eutrophication. However, this is an expensive process, so it's not always used. It depends a lot on um, the regulations in the area, so the department, the environmental regulations of the state and of the um, specific municipality or county. Um, Okay, and then finally, after tertiary treatment, um, let's talk a little bit. Well, after tertiary treatment, we have um, the final step, which is disinfection of quaternary. Um, all right, so sewage treatment issues. So in some areas, stormwater goes directly to surface water. In some areas, stormwater runoff actually goes into the sewage treatment system. In those areas, when we have heavy rains, um, that can actually cause um, flooding and can actually release raw sewage into surface waters, or as you see here, it can cause bubbling back up through the um, stormwater drains. Um, combining sewage and stormwater is beneficial because it treats stormwater runoff. Um, and so we're not necessarily discharging everything that's on the streets directly into surface water, but it can cause overflow during those heavy rains. When we have that overflow, that raw sewage release can contaminate surface waters with bacteria like E. coli, with ammonia, nitrates, and phosphates that are going to contribute to eutrophication, with endocrine disruptors like medications and pharmaceuticals. So... Even our treated wastewater effluent that gets released into surface water has elevated nitrogen and phosphorus levels and endocrine disruptors. Um, sometimes because people flush medications down the drain, but more often because not all of our medication gets metabolized and it actually just passes through the body and is excreted. So here's your practice FRQ for this objective. I want you to identify the number on this wastewater treatment that represents a step of primary treatment. And I want you to describe a pollutant that is removed by that particular process. As always, I look forward to seeing you in class and let me know if you have any questions.